Hello friends, this video on Ray Optics Part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 10 before going ahead with part 11. So let us look at the next scenario where we say that the object is located at the principal focus. That means this is my object. So in this case what will happen? A ray of light parallel to principal axis after reflection will pass through the focus, right? Another ray of light which will approach the pole obliquely after reflection will again go obliquely. So in this case what happened? These two rays, did they meet anywhere? After reflection, this is one reflected ray, this is another reflected ray. But we see a strange thing here. These two rays did not meet anywhere. What does that mean? If two rays are going parallel to each other and it is going far away, that means we are not sure where they'll meet. That means we assume that these two rays will meet somewhere at infinity. We don't know where it will meet. For example, when the object was at infinity, we assumed that the rays are coming parallelly because we don't know from where exactly they are starting. So we assume that it is starting at a very far off point. So we assume that the two rays are coming parallel. Similarly, when these two rays are going parallelly, we assume that at some infinite point, it will go and it will meet. So we assume that it will meet, these two rays will meet at infinity and therefore we assume that the image will be formed at infinity, right? So what else can we tell about the image? The image will be real because even though it is infinity, no matter how far it goes and then it meets, but it will meet actually. So the image will be real and the image will also be inverted because See, if you look at it, these two rays are going far away like this and wherever it meets, it will be like below this principal axis. Like because there is no possibility that these two rays will suddenly move up and they will meet somewhere. So no matter how far it goes and then it meets, but it will always meet somewhere below the principal axis. So the image will always be inverted and the size of the image will obviously be enlarged. Why so? Because if you see, if both these rays would have met here, then the size of the image would be this much. If they meet here, the size of the image would be this much. If they meet here, the size of the image will be this much. So that means the far away they meet, the larger will be the size of the image. So in this case, if the image will be highly enlarged. Right? So all these are the things which we can tell about the image which will be formed if the object is placed at the principal focus. Now let us look at the last scenario where the object is placed between the pole and the principal focus. So we brought the object even more closure. So now what will happen? This object, a ray of light parallel to the principal axis after reflection it will pass through the principal focus. Right? Another ray of light which will approach the pole obliquely after reflection will go obliquely. So in this case, what do you see? In this case, we notice that in, in the previous case, we saw that the two rays went parallel. But in this case, the two rays instead of going parallelly, they are diverging away from each other. So that means it is somewhat, I understand it in this way. If two lines are going parallelly, we can assume that at some point they will meet. But if two lines are going away from each other gradually, that means the more they go, the more away they will go from each other. So there is no possibility that these two rays will meet somewhere as they go ahead. So that means, what does that mean? Does that mean that these two rays will never meet? No, that doesn't mean so because if these two rays are, when they move forward, they are going away from each other. That means if they go backward, they are meeting somewhere. That means if you extrapolate it in the backward direction, both these rays will meet somewhere. And this point, we will say that the image is formed. If this is AB, we say that A dash B dash is the image. But this is a virtual image because the rays are not actually meeting at this point. 
the rays are appearing to meet at that point. They are actually, what is happening to the rays? Actually, the rays are diverging. That is, they are going away from each other. But if we look it, if we retrace it backwards, it looks like or it, it appears as if they are meeting at this point. So we say that the image is formed at this point. So in this case, the most important thing about the image is that the image is virtual. Also, the image is erect because it is above the principal axis. The image is also enlarged. Right? And another thing, what about the location of the image? Here, the image is on the other side of the mirror. Till now, the images were on the same side of the mirror as the object. So, the object was also on the left hand side. So, the image was also on the left hand side. But in this case, the image is on the other side of mirror. So that means what conclusion did you get from this? We saw here that in case of a concave mirror, it is not necessary that you will always get real images. In concave mirror, it always depends upon the location of the object. If the object is too close to the mirror, if the object is placed very close to the mirror, in that case, you get a virtual erect image. But if the object is little far from the mirror, in those cases, you always get real and inverted images, right? So that is why concave mirrors are put into applications where we where the object is very near to the mirror. For example, in case of your shaving mirror, I asked you that time, right? That why do you think a concave mirror is used in your shaving mirror? That's because in case of your shaving mirror, I mean, when you shave, right? It is not that you go to some other room and you keep your shaving mirror at some other room or you keep it some long distance away from you, right? When you want to shave, you are quite closer to the mirror, right? So that means, and you are the object that time, right? And the image which you see on the mirror, that is your image. So you are the object and your distance from the mirror is very less. That means you are very close to the concave mirror. As a result, you get an enlarged image, which helps you in shaving because if you use a shaving mirror, you get a magnified image of your face, which helps you in shaving, right? So you will get an erect image because if you get an inverted image, it will be like, I mean, it will be upside down. So in that way, you cannot shave, right? You want to see an erect image. So if you want an erect image, the image is erect only when it is virtual. So till now you saw, right? Wherever it was a real image, it was always an inverted image. So it will be a virtual erect image only when the image is virtual, right? So in case of a shaving mirror, it is it required that you get a get an erect image it is also required that you get an enlarged image and that is possible only when the object is very close to the mirror so that is why concave mirrors are used in case of shaving mirrors because the object is very near to the mirror and as a result the mirror gives a magnified image an erect image and the image is on the other side of the mirror and that is why you are able to view the image right because if the image is formed on the same side of the mirror how will you see your image right wherever you see your image it, it is very obvious that the image is on the other side of the mirror that is why you are able to see it if, if your image is behind you how will you see it you will not be able to see it right so I hope you understand the image formation with uh, using a concave mirror because that is how I started it this way. I started with what is a spherical mirror, what is a concave mirror. I explained you what is pole, principal focus, what are the rules which we generally follow during image formation. And I think now that I have discussed all these six cases, it is very much clear to you that how actually, how actually does an image formation take place in case of a concave mirror. So not only concave mirror, we will also discuss about the convex mirror in detail. So before we uh, switch to convex mirror, let us have a quick review of the image formation by concave mirror. This table tells you how the image location varies as the object location varies. So when the object was at infinity, the image was at 
principal focus. What was the nature of the image? Real and inverted and image size was diminished, right? So it is just a table which is prepared using the data in the last three slides. So what do we see as the object is brought towards the principal focus, the image moved away from the principal focus, right? And the nature of the image was real and inverted in all the cases except when the object was very near to the pole of the mirror, right? So I hope this table will help you to get uh, um, a quick review of whatever we studied so far, right? Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.